Welcome back to another episode on the All the Cool Kids Are Vegan podcast. And this time I've got a guest with me. Um, her name is Basma, and we actually recently met and we bonded over the fact that we're both vegan. Um, literally, that was the first thing <laughs> we said to each other. We met at a co working spot, and I have vegan content creator on my laptop sticker. So she immediately was like, Oh my God, are you vegan? Like, I read your laptop sticker, and I was like, Oh my God, another vegan. Um, so we immediately bonded over that. I asked her about how she turned vegan, uh, which is really interesting, which we'll talk about today as well, and just a bit about her vegan journey. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to introduce her. So welcome on the podcast, you, Thanks Thank you so much. I'm so excited. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for being here. And uh, we're here to talk about veganism, maybe help some people who are trying to transition to veganism to hear yeah. from another person about their story. Um, and yeah, some advice and... Yeah, let's get into it. Yes. Um, also, I just want to say that yes, I actually saw your sticker and I was contemplating in my brain for maybe 15 minutes. I'm like, shall I talk to her? Shall I not? Shall I talk to her? Shall I not? <laughs> but I was like, what are the chances in right. Dubai? I sit, I like, I, I go to that cafe often to be fair, but like, and and we sat in the same table as same well. Same table, then, exactly. And then I was looking, I was like, whoa. And you know, I'm like not working right now. And so I was like, I'm thinking of like, what do I want to do with my career and stuff like that. And then I see that and I was like, it felt like a sign of, you know, go back into your vegan oh, stuff. Oh, so. that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I'm so happy. But you were so met. nice. And it was nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. And immediately bonded. And um, so the first thing I asked you like about how, like, what turned you vegan? Because that's what I think whenever I meet other vegans, it's yeah. the first thing I ask them. Is like, how did you, what made you turn vegan? Yeah. And then you told me that you uh, watched Dominion and you switched overnight to veganism. And I yes. think that's so cool that you did that, like, overnight just because you finally became aware of what happens to animals. Literally, um, yeah. So, yeah, I'd love to start there about the fact that yeah. you watch Dominion uh, maybe you can tell viewers if they don't know what Dominion is like what Dominion yeah. shows what it talks about and yeah take it yeah. from there so um, it, it was overnight it was more like three over three nights because I had watched Earthlings oh, before Dominion which is I like a previous version or like an older version it was filmed 10 years ago and like both these movies or documentaries are tackling veganism from an animal rights standpoint like they don't talk about health they don't really talk about the environment it's purely like what goes on in slaughterhouses and yeah. even pre in like uh, farms and especially factory farming um and so like maybe before i got to earthlings and dominion i i told you about this which is i think it's funny that my little brother he i don't remember how old he was at the time but his best friend she was like this girl best friend and she was like 11 years old or something and she was vegan and I was so curious about it I'm like why would this 11 year old be vegan and I asked my brother is her parents vegan like what and he's like no she's just vegan and then he started sending me on Instagram these videos that she would forward to him about specifically I think it was dairy and like what to me the dairy industry blew my mind I was just I had no idea that cows even had to get pregnant before you know and i a think this is a right? yeah, yeah. A common misconception that um like cows just produce milk year round for no reason and it's like no it's actually cows are like human beings they need to give birth and most um dairy cows you know get killed shortly after and they're impregnated every year and stuff so anyway so he kept sending me these videos and i think over a month i it, it just like planted that seed of like there's something in what I'm eating that I'm just not informed about. I don't know where any of the food that I'm eating, yeah. the food that I'm eating comes from. And I also... When was this, actually? How long ago was that when you watched um, yeah. Dominion and Earthlings? Uh, it was around three years ago now. Uh, I'm coming up on my vegan anniversary mm, in April, uh, which is next month. Thank you. So you remember the date when you watched Dominion and Earthlings? Oh, no. <laughs> I just basically what I did is I went on my phone and looked at my photos and like, what was the first time I like took a picture of a vegan oh, thing? Oh, nice. I made. Um, <laughs> so I don't know if it's the exact yeah, date yeah, or yeah, not, fair. but um, mm. yeah, so it was, it's been three years, which is crazy. And, Amazing. Um, my family actually helps me celebrate my vegan anniversary <laughs> on Aww. some years and so they nice. go like we make a vegan feast and everyone yeah. kind of yeah they're they're supportive um how was it when you first transitioned like especially because yeah. you said you did it overnight kind of over three yeah. nights like that's quite sudden and like you immediately basically cut out all meat dairy and eggs and what else did you cut out you i think you said you threw out all your leather yeah like, i was clothes. i was devastated so basically the movie uh, maybe it will help like 
people understand like why I cut out so much because I think when people think of the word vegan they just think of food yeah. and they think of diet and like yeah. veganism is like a lifestyle that really the aim is like an ethical kind of standpoint that you're taking against like harming animals and so both movies what I loved about them was that yes it addressed the um you know animal um animal agriculture industry and the food and stuff which is the where most of the devastation happens because of the scale of animals that are killed but yeah. they also look at fashion the fashion industry they look at science like how especially monkeys are harmed um and rats and stuff like that the yeah. cosmetics and entertainment like zoos and stuff so that's earthlings mostly right looks at all i of think those. also dominion but yeah yeah, yeah. i haven't earthlings. personally watched because i know I everything's kind of like i've seen the trailer so i know they talk about zoos and stuff yeah dominion i tried watching the first 10 minutes which was about the pig uh yes. farming horrible so then i couldn't watch it further no i understand but, um, it's really hard to yeah, watch because then yeah. so what does dominion show it shows like all the practices of the industries. yes it shows um all the different like i think leather is included because okay. leather is a really big one and it's mainly in india mm. um which is crazy because you would think like I indian know. is uh, indians are like mainly vegetarian but yeah, they're the yeah, biggest yeah. leather exporters because and of dairy well. yeah because yeah. of dairy i know they have to do something Actually with the cows crazy. and it's like really sad because a lot of people think like oh we're just you know optimizing the cow because we're mm. using the leather as not just taking her meat yeah. but it's actually a completely different industry because like uh cows that are bred for leather they're basically starved because they don't really care about you know wow. their health and they're just these really skinny cows that you just they use for their leather and they they die much younger wow. um well even i didn't know that yeah That's something new that I, you just taught me i was like having this argument with my dad because he was i was telling him that they use like over five to six different cows for um cars oh god and i wanted him to uh, <laughs> yeah get like vegan leather yeah, um, yeah yeah which exists nowadays right they're making cars totally with vegan leather um, yeah i think yeah. yeah 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 it's totally an option i think even like higher end brands like range rover and stuff i know yeah. they have that so tesla did you throw out all of your leather bags? So yes okay <laughs> i i totally um detoured no, i the first thing i did was i owned um fur which is crazy because i know mm. fur was it's like more pop popularly um like people are against it even people that aren't vegan they're like right. yeah fur is is horrible it's interesting, yeah. i owned like fur i owned a lot of leather i owned like um uh, even wool like a lot of you know clothing that isn't cotton comes from animals like silk yeah, yeah, yeah. so i remember the first thing i did was like i went into my closet i just started like I just want to say that when I was watching the movies, I was crying. Like, my heart really, really hurt me that I felt betrayed by the world that I was kind of, this is like a, a secret that yeah. everyone keeps and no one tells me about. And it's like, yeah. I was like paying for that to happen for so long. And I kept imagining my dogs and I'm like, I could never do that to my dogs. And actually in China, most fur is actually from dogs, and not yeah. really from foxes or so dog yeah. lovers like that that is a thing um no definitely it's all cultural right like in yeah. china they eat dog meat whereas right. for here we don't we never we eat everything besides dog and it's like people would never eat dog right so you can see that it's also cultural and it's not animal specific which yes people tend to think and i think is. in like eastern europe they eat um horses it's, yeah it's yeah, yeah. more common and true and i felt like before i was like oh my god i would never eat dog like yeah. never dogs are my friends and it's like really what is the difference like yeah. it, when i i've never really met a cow in person yeah. but if i did i'd love the cow no, <laughs> I, I actually did i, I met did? and it was amazing <laughs> there i heard they're like the most gentle creatures ever they they're are. really like quiet they're really gentle that's the thing like you you should never have to be scared of a cow you know they'll never mm. actually hurt you except if they have a baby calf because then the mother cow will do everything to protect which Aww. makes sense but even if you don't actually approach the calf like the mother is not going to do anything yeah but yeah no it's true but i think that's the reason right rick we're we're never actually we never meet pigs and cows and we never actually see them and i think that makes that disconnect for, to see them as food versus as the animal totally. because then we don't don't see them as the animal we just think of them as food which yeah. is just so messed up because they are individual animals and i think yeah. i guess the movie makes you kind of realize that you know seeing what it is that happens to them exactly yeah i felt really detached from i'd never met a cow i'd never met a chicken in person <laughs> um and i don't know if i actually need to 
meet yeah. them i just i need i needed to, to like make that see connection. it make the connection yeah, yeah. that this is an animal i'm eating yeah, yeah like yeah, even yeah, yeah. i i was like when i so the first couple of days that i went vegan i was like research mode i was just like really cool. fascinated by how this the world has like kept the secret and like even words like me and dairy it's like euphemisms for what we're actually eating like nice. like parts of a cow like ribeye whatever yeah. instead of saying like this is the leg of a cow right. they or foie gras like yeah. kind of just euphemisms for what were like the Interesting. the liver of a duck like yeah no it's I true i think even these words burger it, it distances us from 100%. the actual animal 100 um, which is so funny because i was just having an argument with someone else recently who was on the, about uh, veganism and stuff and like i told him that uh, a chicken egg is like a, a the period Hen period yeah yes. and he was like oh my god it's a period and he was <laughs> and i was like yeah look like these are actual things like cow's milk is breast milk and mm. animal meats is just a dead body basically and like mm. a chicken egg is a period and then um someone behind me who was actually also vegan starts laughing she's like i know like <laughs> if you tell people that they're periods they're gonna react a bit like harsh because they're like what like yes. periods but it is actually the facts like if you look at how an egg is made if you look at the um the uh, bio functioning of yeah. a chicken like you can see that that's how an egg is made through like the way periods are yeah and we have moment. eggs as well but just mm. ours aren't laid exactly. you know they're like yeah. but it, it's, it's like crazy. and they're meant to like have eggs i think like nor like us kind of once a month but because of how we yeah. bred them they I have know. an egg a day i know which for their body is like it's terrible like they, they have broken legs and because of the calcium I, I read that the calcium it takes to produce the exactly. shell of the egg it takes so much calcium from their body they're not able to get that calcium back through um food yes so in that sense like they get calcium depleted over time they're stuff. actually like so most of the eggs aren't actually like uh baby chickens yeah so they, they they're not fertilized right they're not fertilized so they eat them actually the yeah, chickens which is good for which them. is good for them yeah exactly so i think what but we take it away so I it, um i've heard that if people would want chickens and chicken tends to now because they're bred to lay so many eggs they'll lay eggs so if mm. people get chickens they shouldn't eat those eggs they should give them back to the eggs like that's the most yeah. ethical thing to do is just give the, the eggs that they lay back to them exactly and that's like the only way to ever actually get chickens and have them as pets you know if yeah. they lay eggs to not eat them basically the yeah, eggs. yeah yeah and because i have a friend who does have like an egg laying chicken and she's like well the egg the chicken doesn't need the egg like yeah. why can't i just take it i'm not harming know. her but like i guess this yeah. is yeah like the best way for them would be to feed it back but i guess yes yeah. yes the days after i went vegan this was like my mission is that i needed to tell the world this secret mm. like i was so excited to tell my family like i made them what i didn't make them i mean kind of i did but i was like we have to watch dominion all together and nice. what was shocking to me is that not everyone responded as mm. like the way you did the way i second. did yeah. yeah and they were like this doesn't i mean it's sad but it doesn't change anything for me i still like to eat you know the things i like to eat and mm. you know yeah i think I was really sh I think that was the real shock is when I went vegan I immediately yeah. went on my Instagram and started posting yeah. all these things and I was like if people only knew everyone would stop and it's right. like no like I found that not everyone it didn't click with everyone yeah, as quickly yeah, yeah. as it did with me and I that know. was like, it's a sad part it's a it's, yeah, it's hard you know it's it's hard being vegan in a non-vegan world because we've like been confronted with the truth and we totally. want other people to have that same like make that same connection um yeah. and i get that it takes some people longer to make that connection i think it takes maybe different things to trigger that maybe that movie yes. didn't trigger them but yes. maybe going to an actual slaughterhouse would trigger them i don't know you know what yeah, i mean yeah, but yeah. like yeah i know it's hard and then it reminds me of i think i shared this with you before of like the hundred point system that this one vegan came up with which means that even if someone went vegan overnight they didn't really go vegan overnight like there has been events mm. in someone's life that helped that convince them that this nice. this is a way of like nice. and when i think of my own story it's like yeah that's the that was the final straw watching dominion but I think living i was living in berkeley for a long time in the u.s and it was a really vegan friendly place and i just i was so exposed to like vegan food that i was like this is totally a way i can live my nice. life so even though i didn't go vegan i I, yeah. I think things and like meeting vegans over yeah, my lifetime uh, um cool. so yeah i think those you know, seeds are planted those things add then, up yeah, 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 yeah eventually exactly. that helps you eventually i'm like 
why am I not vegan? And nice. I just went vegan. Yeah. Amazing. And now it's been three years upcoming, and, and you yeah. said you did some vegan activism as well. Like, yes. I guess you came, became so passionate about spreading the message. Yeah, it, it wasn't even like a conscious thought. I remember the first, you know, months especially i was just it felt so natural that i want to be a part of it it felt like going vegan wasn't enough to be honest like i'm just one person and i felt like i needed to do much more so the first thing i did was try to reach out to different um animal rights groups around the world and um i reached out to a couple and like some of them are really you know known worldwide and one of them was animal safe nice and um yeah i especially wanted to raise awareness in saudi um because yeah i just it felt like kind of um what's the terminology like um low-hanging fruit because i was living there at the time and there wasn't a lot going on but there was there were a few actually uh vegan like um like organizations like groups no just like uh instagram kind of personalities that talk about the stuff and really address the animal part of it but so the first thing i did was i reached out to animals say i mean before that i just was sharing on my own instagram page yeah and creating content and stuff like that and then i uh reached out to animal save and i asked them if it if i could you know get involved and then i set up the saudi chapter for animal save which was just you know creating an instagram account which is still out there cool and sharing translating uh, to arabic yeah yeah and then um you did like a whole kind of middle eastern uh like join kind of all the middle eastern organizations and make content that's really nice yeah exactly i i it was also really helpful for me because the hardest part for me about and you asked this question i don't think i really answered it but when i the hardest thing for me when i went first went vegan wasn't really getting rid of the clothes or changing Mm. my diet it was just the fact that i felt you know no one really gets this um and so connecting with other vegans through these animal rights organization like people who really get it and i remember when we first met i was i was kind of trying to like I think when you first meet someone who's vegan you're like you want to know are they vegan for are animals they, are or they are really? they vegan for just like health reasons and so it's yeah, like when someone says animals i'm like okay yeah, yeah. i feel like less alone no it's true so. it's true because i think people who are vegan for um health and environment yeah. might eventually switch back to like eating animal products somewhere you know along their life but i feel like people who are vegan for the animals it's like you can't turn back because you know totally what it costs what the cost is for to get those animal products and then you just it feels it's just wrong like you just people ask me sometimes how do you stick to being vegan or whatever but it's just like if something feels like it's the right thing to do that's the only thing to do there's no other way around it you know i agree with that interesting yeah and since joining all these like middle eastern organizations you feel like uh the gulf region like is veganism a bit on the rise there what can you share about veganism in the gulf region specifically Mm, i mean i can't speak for the whole gulf region because i'm I, I haven't really, you know, been super exposed, but from my limited knowledge, I would say that um, it's definitely on the rise in terms of just even products in grocery stores. Like cool. you can really see Beyond Me is yeah. everywhere. And um, I mean, specifically in Dubai, we can talk about, I guess, as yeah. well. Like Dubai, actually, I, people ask me about veganism in Dubai, and I feel like it is definitely, um, there's a lot of vegan products, options, like totally. restaurants in a supermarket, yeah. much vegan options. Um, Especially dairy alternatives, I found, yeah. um, are, are even preferable. I found, like, most places, yeah. yeah. Um, but I would love to see more uh home brands that are vegan like a vegan kebab uh kind of and i think i did in the frozen section of a grocery store but it would be really nice to like veganize traditional dishes because like cool you know what i mean like i think i I find that people are quite attached to to food for the i think we talked about this as well like just the memory of eating a shawarma or Mm. something i don't want to give that up because it's it reminds me of my childhood or whatever and so it's good to like I recently Veganize actually ordered that. from this one restaurant called Zaroub. Zaroub, I know. Have you tried? They have Tindal. So Tindal, <laughs> it's like from yeah. Singapore, I Tindal's think. Tindal's really good uh, mock really chicken. really good yeah. mock chicken. Yeah. And it genuinely tastes like a chicken shawarma. It does, and yeah. I've ordered from it several times. And it's so good. <laughs> shout out to Zaroub. <laughs> yes. Shout yeah. out. Thank you. <laughs> no, I know. It's true. And that's the, I think like that's the type of subtle changes we need to actually create a vegan world because then people don't actually have to give anything up and they can just replace it with you know yeah cruelty-free products and then 
we can have a vegan world <laughs> eventually yes. so joining Crazy. animal save was i did that for like a year and um we i mainly just posted stuff on the instagram account but i w- we also did like um mina slash turkey mina is like yeah. middle east and um turkey in africa we ca- we collaborated on videos to like yeah. kind of raise awareness in each different language yeah you want to talk about that one video you did oh yeah so um so this this one activist called regan she uh, uh okay maybe i can introduce like the um vigils like what those are Mm. so vigils is another form of activism where um activists go to the the slaughterhouses right before the animals go in to be killed and they just provide them with water and then they take videos yeah from the trucks when the trucks drive in. yeah and i think it can be very powerful for people to see Mm. those animals in that condition right before they died like for me it was really when i first i was just did you ever attend one I did not, but I I would love to. I did tried you see them? You said in the in California? LA. Yeah. yeah, I was trying to, but it was like at two a.m. because the timings that trucks move. Yeah. By the way, this I think this was all done on purpose. Like, mm. first of all, slaughterhouses are usually like at least two hours away from cities. Yeah. And it's like middle sense. of the night, so it's really inconvenient timing. So it yeah. was at two a.m. I just I couldn't make it at that time. Um, so horrible. Like just thinking about the yeah. fact that like that happens just like all these animals just go into the slaughterhouse a huge numbers you as know well. get killed yeah yeah that just makes you emotional yeah <laughs> actually like i i've seen videos of those vigils and like mm. um i think it's amazing that they give like water and and kind of human comfort somehow mm. to these animals um but i can't imagine them knowing that they're gonna just drive into that slaughterhouse anyway after you it's see a bit them. morbid Oof, yeah, yeah but then the, so there was an activist Regan. so yeah. yeah we she she was killed because um the truck had run over her because they yeah. were trying to do that um and yeah so it was really devastating so all the Crazy. different chapters around the world we tried to like raise awareness um but i guess this also like takes me to the fact that i, I got burnt out i think because of this emotional component i was it's like so, yeah. looking at videos of mm. animals dying almost every day um yeah i felt a bit defeated and so yeah after that first year i just dropped it i just dropped um yeah it, it can yeah. be a bit like it was basically hard. as vegans especially for the animals you have to like take uh be kind to yourself as well because i was the same like once i got really passionate about it i started i wanted to know everything that happens to these animals right and i want to yeah. be just very knowledgeable about everything that they go through so that i can ag- advocate better for them yeah uh but it's so hard once you once you connect with the animals in that way and you see them for the individuals that they are and you understand that they can suffer and you see them suffering in these videos mm-hmm like it really hurts you and then like totally. you also become very more passionate about it about spreading it you're like people need to see that they're being hurt like this mm. um but it can be hard because then you can put that backlash and just being a vegan advocate for the animals is hard the backlash sure. was seriously hard um, yeah because people don't want to see that even though like it's happening because <laughs> because it's like they can i can be against hunters hunting because yeah. i have no involvement in that but when someone's confronted with you're actually paying for this right. it's really hard to yeah. come to terms because the only solution would be to stop yeah so yeah, i found yeah, like yeah. the backlash was hard like especially on social media people can be ruthless mm. you know there's no account they don't have to meet you they're just yeah. like writing a comment and um yeah so yeah I, I i gave up on trying to do it on instagram but i um i i was sharing with you that in amsterdam this summer i yeah. joined the first very first um um safe square they're called which um i think it's a really effective form of activism they hold up uh videos of like basically dominion i think they're videos from dominion the movie and it's um footage of animals being killed in slaughterhouses and i think coming coming into veganism from a logical perspective can be very i think it's it's good but not very effective like what do you mean logic so so I, I, what i mean is like if i talk to a non-vegan mm. about how you know what animals go through it's not the same effect as if them actually watching the footage yeah like for me yeah. it was like such a quick so anyway i guess what i'm saying is that like holding up those videos yeah, people stop and they're like yeah oh my god what is that and then you start the conversation yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah, i tried yeah. that out this summer and it was really nice um cool. did you get some positive feedback from people who came up to you and like you were talking to them like how was that experience yeah did you get anything positive back from them 
<laughs> I would say that um let's see anything positive I think I think it was a bit disappointing <laughs> really I guess maybe you're in the central square of Amsterdam like there's people walking yeah were there people walking up to you and like there were a lot of people walking up I guess because it was a Saturday and people were just doing their shopping and wanting to have fun yeah. I I didn't feel like they were yeah, I don't know I think involved. I still I still want someone to react as the same as i reacted <laughs> which is just like oh my god i'm going vegan right now <laughs> i know that's that's the, that's that's the, the wish hope, yeah but, um no i know what you mean Everything. what i've noticed is that most people come up with the same arguments which to me is a kind of helpful thing because i know that it's a learn you know what we think yeah. what happens has is it's been someone's taught, ta- right? taught exactly yeah. so it's it's easy to kind of debunk some of these arguments because nice. they're very similar yeah um, once you do vegan activism you realize that people come back to you with the same arguments and it's kind of same. the first time i realized that i'm like how does everyone have the same arguments yes. everyone talks about how lions eat meat and <laughs> yes you know, stuff like that but you know what was weird is that when i went vegan i never thought of any of these arguments i felt like yeah I, but yeah like the whole lions eat meat is a very popular one and i remember even when i thought of the arguments i was like oh my god i'm sure no one has thought of this loophole you know or and and people i find have the similar um like i have the really good rebuttal for you and then like as i mentioned like to you that there are websites that just tackle over a hundred different arguments and each one is like pretty much yeah debunked pretty quickly yeah i think for every single one of them you can have an other argument yeah like um it's so true because eventually like that's why i think we're so passionate about veganism is because there is like nothing that proves otherwise you yeah. know what i mean like what happens to animals is wrong plain wrong and anything that people can say comes from some type of belief right where they right. Believe, see animals in a certain way or yeah. um anything just comes from the like, people don't want to turn vegan because of convenience because of taste but all those can be debunked in a way that you say okay but do your morals align over everything also if you wouldn't hit a dog why do you um Yes. pay for someone to kill an animal and stuff like that so, so you're linking your morals and like all those arguments yeah eventually you can get people thinking about their choices and then you know that's yeah. how kind of vegan activism works right making them more conscious somehow totally and it's like you touched on such a good point which is that i'm just simply like your values aren't changing you're just aligning your actions with your values and like that's for me what felt so empowering about going vegan it's like i i said that i was i cared about animals and um and also i don't want to like say that i love animals it's not that i love them i just genuinely like respect their life and you know i i think of my dogs as individuals and stuff and all animals but i mean not equal i think insects are different to like cows and stuff and that goes into sentience and stuff but um but i still think if we don't have to kill then why kill totally like i I shouldn't just kill for fun no like in the way that one time there was a spider walking on the table and Mm. one of my friend's friends he just smacked it dead and i was like there's no reason to do that you can just let the spider go away trap it under a mug take it outside like if you can do that versus killing it why wouldn't you so even with insects i have that kind of like thing where it's like if you don't have to kill them like i get it like even nowadays there's so many flies in the house so we try to kill flies but i'm like say a little prayer every time we kill the flies i totally get it (laughs) but it's like a micro violence that you're just because i i even my uncle um he has like a two-year-old daughter who i love and um he kind of like is teaching her to kill the mosquito and mm, but mosquitoes are an, mos- except, uh, exception, an exception but say. it's like it's such a reflexive thing it's not even like oh let's think of another solution of how mm. we can not have yeah. mosquitoes in the house it's like no that's true yeah. killing them is just doesn't yeah it, i think for kids it, it it is a bit of a violent thing but to adults it just feels mm. like yeah. I, I don't feel any guilt over killing yeah. a yeah, an yeah, insect yeah. or an ant or yeah i know um but again i think but definitely it is like killing totally in, different yeah, than with um, mammals yeah you know like cows and yeah yeah, yeah. everything like yeah. and i i remember like one of the main arguments or things that i say to people that are thinking about going vegan is just genuinely try to kill an animal yourself right. like for every animal that you're eating try to kill it yourself and s- would you really be able to kill three chickens a day or however long that you're however many yeah. times you eat animal products right. um because they would say they want to they like it because of the taste and stuff but then right. do you really val- like 
Would you be able, because you want to eat it, because you want to cook it or whatever, would you be able to do the deed yourself and, and kill that animal yourself yeah. to, to cook it? Like, probably you would put the knife down. Uh, I recently saw a great ad, actually. I'm, I'll show it to you later. <laughs> it yeah. was um, about this restaurant um, that was uh, do-it-yourself, kind of. Like, and it was, an, it was mm. a fake ad. Um, and then um, these people who sat down had to go for the, through the whole experience. So he ordered bacon. So then he had to go back door and kill the pig himself. I think I've seen yeah, this. And he it's couldn't, like the waiter like yeah, escorts him exactly. to the room. Exactly. Yes. Yes. It's so good. I um, wish that was truly how it, yeah, how it was. Literally. And then afterwards he sat down and he couldn't go through it. But then the people instead um cut like killed the animal for him so then when he sat down he had that meat in front of him he like couldn't eat it and his friends were like oh that was such a cool experience uh, aren't you going to enjoy your meat now and then mm. he was like how can you do that after having seen the animal being killed it's a very cool ad i love it yeah, yeah. really effective yeah i think in the uk especially there's a lot more vegan ads and i think it's yeah. so powerful so cool right? to have ads um like that yes mm. and it's I like I think yeah it really touches upon on my experience of like just people ask me often like do you miss eating meat do you mm. miss eating this and that and it's like maybe sometimes i do but it's just so tainted yeah it just i cannot yep. you know separate or unsee those like when i think of milk it's like because when i first went vegan i was really kind of sensitive around other people eating meat it's like really hard for me to enjoy my meal when someone's yep. eating like just like i just can't i just pictured the animal and it's i don't know it's really hard to um yeah. explain it to people and it's like i want to be understanding and i don't want to be that vegan who makes people uncomfortable but at the same time it's like it I, makes you uncomfortable <laughs> it makes me uncomfortable and it's like i see an animal it's not even really about me it's just i don't know yeah i guess I it's it. like more about the animal and i just wish people knew what they were doing because it's like as you said it's their own values you're they're acting out of alignment with yeah. their own values i know so I know, yeah. I, but it kind of goes into carnism. I don't know if you heard yes. that topic, the term before. And I think people... It's a belief system. Yeah, it's and it's really an wired. invisible belief system. Mm. You know, people don't actually know that they have this belief. They think vegetarian and veganism is a certain belief. But what they have is also a belief, which yes. we've now called the carnism by Dr. Melanie Joy. Yes. And like that's, I think, is so cool is to actually make them realize that what they think actually stems from a belief and to understand that you can change your beliefs and understand and align them with your morals you know exactly yeah. what you said but it's so deeply rooted like yeah you know it's rooted in everything in, in governments in everything. hospitals like in and it's you know, legalized yeah so it's, it's really legalized. hard for people to think people think oh because it's legal it's fine yeah and yeah. it's like and even like when i came to that realization of like the state and the whole world is colluding on this really bad atrocity it's like it's it yeah. makes you kind of doubt yeah. government and yeah. laws and i don't know what um, you mean but but i guess but yeah nowadays, it's so entrenched yeah. into but I, I do we do see i guess some positive feedback like in especially in europe i think things are changing i think foie gras started to be banned in some places yeah, yeah, yeah. um fur is starting to be banned yes. in a lot of places and i think hopefully all those little things eventually will lead to a more Absolutely. you know vegan world yeah i'm really i i'm i'm a believer that the truth will always prevail and to nice. me veganism is just about the truth yeah. i'm not like that's so to... cool you said that because carnism says that carnism relies on people not knowing the truth right so that's sense veganism because it's the truth it will always overpower yeah um carnism i just have no doubt like even when people i'm arguing with someone i just it's not that i know that i'm right but i just i'm i'm kind of like i'm i'm just like gentle with people when they're arguing because i'm like it's just the truth and mm. it's, it's hard to accept the mm. truth but i'm just gonna nice yeah, yeah i love that um so what yeah. was the hardest part about turning vegan for you actually or what would what was the yeah how was that transition and what stopped you maybe from transitioning or yeah i so i i, I want to like put this background that like i wasn't like i grew up genuinely in a family that was foodies like mm. we traveled for food my you family ate everything i ate everything and i had this pride about the fact that i eat everything like even like i don't know um like, like insects <laughs> i would be open to it but more <laughs> no i mean just like, like all you, you sea ate, like, things all you know? yeah all sea. i was gonna say like all type of seafood like yes. all like lobster or not lobster what the uh, yeah lobster i think yeah lobster like you know. everything i ate everything and it was almost like a um, kind of sign of being more like 
well cultured mm. you know and i'm i'm this well traveled well cultured yeah. person and my family can i interrupt you and say yes. that i've read something there that did uh, i think um jonathan saffron froer in his book eating animals he I says that book i love uh, it <laughs> He's good, yeah, yeah he says that uh, i eat everything is more socially accepted than saying you only eat certain things and i think that's so interesting yes yeah. and it's almost like a marker of I'm yeah. this like easygoing, yeah. relaxed yeah. person, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm not this fussy. Yeah, you know, eater, I don't ask yeah. the waiter for something special. It's um, crazy, right? But It, well, whereas yeah. eating according to ethics is more like not socially accepted. <laughs> yes, and it's like you're thought of a bit as obnoxious. Yeah, you know. Yeah, um, crazy. Please continue. Yeah, no, and I guess like that is an important thing to say is that like you know growing up it's not like oh you know my whatever i ate didn't matter it actually like tied me and my family it was like a point of connection like we all ate this we loved this one restaurant yeah. we traveled for it even my friend groups like i think growing up in saudi there wasn't a lot of entertainment so food was really that go-to and so yeah i was just thinking of what when i travel like wh where am i gonna go you know i can't go to the same restaurants that i used to go to and mm, when um, you turn vegan you were questioning that. yeah like it, it's genuinely like uh, it's a loss of um kind of traditions in a sense yeah. and, and that is a big argument it's like a tradition in my family to eat this food or in this festival we eat this food and yeah. and i just want to you know kind of validate that that is a a, a genuine kind of loss like it wasn't mm, but for me it was definitely worth it because it, yeah it was in alignment of my own values and i got to veganize like so many of those dishes which that's is cool, cool. That's um, really nice. yeah so that was the hardest thing about turning for me vegan. personally yeah mm. that was the hardest thing i didn't really go to any of the other arguments it was just mainly that whole connection with others yeah and that's a I, big part of it like yeah. like family dinner like um, being able to eat together and stuff it's a big part yeah. of it and that's why i guess veganism kind of alienates people if not everyone is vegan it will alienate you and i think that's a hard part about veganism um being yeah. vegan on vegan world you get alienated and that's why it's so nice to connect with vegans yes yeah, like <laughs> when you together. when you shared like your list of vegan restaurants yeah. i was like finally i can share lists of restaurants because yeah. i used to do that with my friends a lot we would like mm. you know for this city we have this like collection of restaurants and whatever yeah. and so um yeah but i i find that vegan restaurants nowadays are really good and you know 100%. i can still share them with my friends yeah yeah, yeah um, exactly good. what would be your advice for someone uh turning just turning vegan or how do they go about it and any words of advice for people like that aspiring vegans yes um or i, I give advice need. lightly so take this with a, <laughs> a whole grain of salt or a pinch of a ton of salt um <laughs> and this is like personal to me that this is what helped me so it won't help everyone but for me it was important not to focus so much on the how meaning like oh how am i going to manage this diet how am okay. i going to manage when i travel yeah. it was more about getting really clear on the why like why am i doing this like why does nice. this matter to me and just really doing the research of like especially the animal ethical part i found you know I, for me personally it was very convincing but i know like for other people like for you you mentioned that um the health angle was more of an interesting like uh kind yeah. of entrance into the vegan thing yeah. so yeah just getting clear on the why makes the how much easier so not getting so stuck on like nice when i travel what am i gonna do da, 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 da. like it's just like i know that this is something i want to do with my life like i went to france recently and to this like little town that has i just felt like it probably has no vegan options but i met i managed you know i made it happen is because yeah. i felt very convinced in my decision and yeah 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 so yeah i would and say I think, that's the one thing i would say yeah but i, I think that helps anyway to um start like introduce veganism to those places that don't know about it because then you can introduce it to them and be like look i don't eat um animal products so like please can you serve me something that yes. uses almond milk or something you know so by introducing that even already mm. you're planting a seed in that place in that village or whatever yeah so i think that already inspires more veganism uh so i think that's cool. yeah and you're like almost telling them that there is a demand for this product yes exactly. apparently like they do this in the u.s and i didn't know that this was a thing and mm. i haven't tried it but people go to grocery stores their mm. local grocery store and they'd be like can you get me this product and sometimes the grocery store actually gets it mm. like can you get me this brand of um cool even here maybe i haven't tried it but apparently they're open to it like you can go to the information desk and say like hey i want this can you find it yeah 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 so that would be cool yeah any other advice um i don't love giving advice 
because it's I mean, like so personal to each yeah, person but, but i think yeah. what about like dealing with non-vegans or right you know what i mean uh, okay so i guess advice is <laughs> or maybe um kind of being honest about it that it is it can be lonely sometimes to be vegan in a crowd of non-vegans it can feel like yeah you know um um just i think emotionally for me it was the hardest like yeah everything else was super easy just yeah. emotionally so okay yeah i would say this advice is try to find vegans like mm. try to find even if it's a virtual relationship yeah. and online support, support groups right? and there are actually online support yeah. groups i remember my first month i just wanted to talk to other mm. vegans and be like oh my god i know about the secret and like let's connect over it so um when i travel i try to find groups that are nice. vegan and even in dubai like on meetup yeah i looked up there's like vegan brunches and no, i think exactly. it's nice to like connect with people that have similar views yeah and because stuff. then because it can be so hard because you were not if you ha have a lot of non-vegans in your circle yes. it, it can be like uh not everyone has the same views as you so it's nice to meet people who have the same views 100 yeah. percent agree yeah. what do you think is the if that's like the hardest part about being vegan what's the best part about being vegan oh i love it it just changed my life <laughs> yeah 360 degree no not 360 180 <laughs> degrees <laughs> 360 would make me in the same place yeah um how did it change your life i think i just felt like a sense of purpose in this world like i felt so connected to the natural world which yeah. sounds a bit cliche but it's, it's really so true it's you feel like part of this world mm. again and like um yeah it gave me it tapped me back into my own um like my own like sense yourself, of sensitivity like, and yeah. um em empathy for for others i felt like I, I felt connected to animals a lot more and mm. it gave me more sense of aliveness and um yeah. I just it's just empowering it's really empowering to know that i'm making a choice and even though maybe other people aren't and mm. the food is genuinely amazing yeah 100 percent. and i it's think it introduces so you to like even more type of food tastes and options and things you've never tasted before you yeah know what I mean? and you meet really cool people i found like mm. vegans are usually very open-minded yeah, open-minded yeah. like um i think i yeah. guess it changes your sense of compassion towards like all life suddenly yeah. you yeah. start to recognize that and i think then that compassion spreads to even people and 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 just you just become more compassionate overall 100 you know? like i think it gave me more i always had this where i was like very empathetic towards marginalized groups like yeah, you know whether it's course. like women people of color whatever yeah. you know queer people animals was just another you know subgroup you know like there is the sense of like a hierarchy yeah. that humans are better than animals so being on the finally it felt like no we're all you yeah. know i'm part of this ecosystem it gave me Nice. the sense of empathy yeah i don't mm. even know how to put it into words really but it just i felt more connected to myself i would say that, that no that's amazing and i love that thing, yeah how did it impact your professional life veganism? oh it majorly <laughs> impacted it i didn't think it would impact it as much so i was i'm i was in finance um not necessarily like i was i i was passionate ish about my job it wasn't like the center of my life but i had no kind of huge objections towards it but then when i went vegan it was like i just wanted to spend all my waking hours energy time kind of fighting for this thing mm -hmm. and um it felt like my real job was a bit me meaningless compared to my vegan stuff and so i started in, initially i was like oh i'm just gonna quit and find this other job but then i didn't do that but i tried to every job that i've had i'm very vocal i mean it, just saying that you're vegan people start asking you a billion questions so then i i yeah, would speak course. up on it um 100 yeah, that happened but yeah and, and so i've always been like the person that they go to for more ethical practices or incorporating sustainability into what we're doing and cool. um so yeah every job i would say um, and the, my, my, my most recent job i'm in venture capital which is like investing in companies um cool. i convinced them i don't know if i convinced them but i really like kind of was a proponent for investing in alternative meats um because nice. so, we, we had a mandate to invest worldwide and i was like kind of and, and more from a factual standpoint of like look at the numbers like beyond meat their ipo was one of the most successful ones um nice. oprah's backing oatly like Ooh. so even from a numbers standpoint veganism should be supported um cool. 
monetarily so uh, and i think that's cool yeah. for veganism you know yeah. that it has that market and it has that potential and i think yeah. beyond me was a trailblazer for that in terms of like successful vegan business and yeah. Oatly as well. that's amazing but um yeah and then now i was like looking to to work for a vc a venture capital that purely invests in um alternative meats uh cool. or any 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 business that yeah wants to like um it's a great form of activism yeah. you know because i i was learning about all the different ways that you can advocate for animals and investing in like lab grown meat or whatever or like investing in new technologies like that yeah. will eventually save so many animals so there's so many yeah. ways to go about your advocacy and that's like one big part of it that's such yeah. a good point actually to bring up that there if you're not so if you're someone who's more shy or doesn't want to be that outspoken vegan there yeah. as you said so many different ways to be an advocate and exactly like proponent yeah and yeah there's so there's this one maybe i'll shout out to this person because i feel like yeah. he's really you know trailblazing in saudi um khal bin walid he has a, a venture capital firm called kbw ventures that completely i think focus on alternative meats and i was nice. trying to yeah like find, kind of collaborate with him or, or work with him and so yeah it's majorly impacted my career i'll just say that yeah and, no that's yeah. amazing so it's now you want to do something that uh, makes an impact uh, for the yes. animals and that's beautiful and you're using your passion to do that i think a lot of people can relate in the fact that they ev everyone has an individual passion um and through that passion they can advocate for animals in all different ways you know yeah it's really cool yeah all right um any final remarks um that you'd want to share mm. um or have we kind of covered it all no. <laughs> yeah <laughs> if we can help in any way um, you know can reach out to us yeah definitely definitely i'm i'm not on on social media yeah i'm I on think that's linkedin very interesting about you <laughs> yeah maybe that's a topic for another podcast but um i can yeah people can reach out to me on linkedin and yeah. I'm maybe if they're interested about about veganism in the gulf region maybe they're from here and they want to like yes be um, a, yeah anything to help the animals genuinely i'm so yeah. for it um yeah. yeah well then thank you so much Basma, for joining us thank on you. all the cool kids are vegan podcast <laughs> thank you everyone for listening and we'll see you next time bye